2020 Rolls-Royce Wraith Black Badge Review Half Million Dollar Flex The Wraith is Rolls-Royce's full-size, grand touring coupe. It measures 207.4 inches from nose to tail and sports a 122.5-inch wheelbase. The design leads with the vertical flash of Rolls Phantom grille and follows up with a sweeping roofline that flows smoothly and near seamlessly from the base of A-pillar to the rear deck lid. The proportions and sparse sculpting and detailing lend the Wraith a heavy, solid appearance as if machined from a solid block of steel that is backed up by both the quality of its construction. The black badge package adds $50,000 to the Wraith's $330,000 starting price, bringing both performance upgrades and styling tweaks to the party. In addition to a torquier engine tune, there's also a throatier exhaust, which you can still barely hear in the roller's coffin quiet cabin, a set of 21-inch carbon alloy composite wheels and a more dynamic sport setting for the standard self-leveling air suspension, for more lively handling. Of course, the suite also adds black badges, black detailing and a dark chrome spirit of ecstasy hood ornament to the exterior, along with what Rolls calls technical fiber trim to the cabin. V12 Powered Magic Carpet Ride Tipping the scales at a hefty 5,379 pounds, about as much as the full-size, three-row Cadillac Escalade SUV, this is a whole lot of vehicle. Fortunately, it steps fairly lightly, riding on a standard adaptive air suspension that goes from comfortably soaking up the biggest bumps to nimbly picking its way up a twisty road at the touch of a button. At all times, the Wraith feels as if floating over the road rather than rolling on it, but never disconnected or sloppy, thanks to the precise double wishbone front and multi-link rear suspension and light, yet direct steering. Even in the sportiest setting, made slightly sharper by the black badge upgrades, the Wraith always feels magic carpet smooth over bumps and imperfections. Motivating all of that mass is a 6.6-liter turbocharged V12 engine making 623 horsepower. However, this black badge version boasts a more potent tune, bumping the standard 605 pound-feet of torque up to 642. That torque is sent through a smooth-shifting 8-speed automatic transmission, with power sent solely to the rear wheels. Surging away from a stop is effortless and smooth, like a train leaving the station or an airplane gathering speed for takeoff. There's not even a tachometer on the dashboard in the traditional sense, just a power reserve dial that shows the percentage of power you're not using. Even when launching from 0 to 60 miles per hour in 4.4 seconds, the Wraith feels relaxed, never brutal or even particularly loud. This is simply what it does effortless speed. For comparison, the Wraith's primary competitor, the Bentley Continental GTW12, pulls off the 60 miles per hour sprint about a second quicker, at a stated 3.5 seconds. Mercedes AMG's S63 coupe with its twin turbocharged V8 is also quicker to 60 at 3.4 seconds, though it's hauling about 1,000 fewer pounds. I don't doubt that Rolls engineers prioritized efficiency when tuning the Wraith, but given the physical realities of this 2.5-ton car, I'm guessing it wasn't a very high priority. Fuel economy lands at 12 miles per gallon city, 18 mpg highway, and 14 miles per gallon combined only a single mpg behind the W12-powered Continental. Unlike the Conti, however, there's no lighter, more efficient V8 option available. Classic Cabin Tech Here's the thing about the Wraith's Cabin Tech, it's not that it's bad, it's just nearly a decade old. Emerging from behind a motorized cover during the startup sequence is an older version of BMW's iDrive infotainment suite that I'm sure hasn't been significantly updated since the Wraith's debut in 2013. It was awkward and confusing then, and it takes just as much getting used to now. The 10.2-inch screen looks dim and low resolution compared to the buffet of displays you'll find in the comparably run-of-the-mill Mercedes S-Class or even the BMW Group's own 8 Series. Onboard voice command and navigation get the job done well enough, but feel stiff and dated compared to today's cloud-connected systems. Smartphone integration is extremely limited. Android Auto? Apple CarPlay? Those things didn't exist in 2013, so the 2020 Wraith doesn't have M. You can't easily listen to Spotify or Tidal on the road, but there's a standard 20GB hard drive tucked into the dashboard that can store music ripped from CDs, USB drives, or Blu-ray discs. Who's still buying CDs in 2020? You could make the argument that nobody is buying a Rolls for the dashboard tech and I'd be inclined to agree but the Continental knocks it out of the park in this category with its much more advanced Porsche communication management based cabin tech suite. 
Buyers who are even bothering to cross shop are probably looking at the Bentley Continental GT which is lighter, faster, newer and blessed with better tech. Personally, I prefer the Continental's more sculpted exterior design and more modern cabin as well. For my purely hypothetical pile of money, the Bentley, with the smaller V8, is objectively and subjectively, the better car. One could also consider a host of GT supercars at this price or even make the argument that an AMG S-Class Coupe, Porsche's Panamera or even, if you're feeling really future-forward, a Taycan Turbo are worthy alternatives that match the performance for hundreds of thousands less, but none are really an apples-to-apples -apples comparison. Value goes out of the window with something this expensive. It's not a pure sports car, so track times and 0-60 to 60 speeds are only so useful. Even the woefully outdated tech means little compared to the brand and the status that comes with it what the buyer is truly purchasing when they commission their roles. Yes, the Wraith Black Badge is a truly awesome machine in its own right powerful and comfortable with a handcrafted touch, but more importantly, it's a half-million-dollar flex.